Yeah. You're someone I consider to be one of the best product visionaries in the space. Um, you created Satoshi Dice, which at one point uh, did roughly 50% of transactions on the Bitcoin network. And more recently, you founded Shapeshift, which is now the world's largest digital asset exchange, non-custodial, that is. Um, so I'm curious, and, and you were really thinking about a world of many tokens beyond Bitcoin uh, a few years ago when it was pretty contrarian to do that. Um, so I'm curious, what were the insights that you had early on um, that, that gave you conviction about this world of many tokens beyond Bitcoin? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, when, when Shapeshift started, the, the only other tokens were, were like Litecoin and, and Dogecoin and a couple others. So a lot of people, I think, thought I went totally, totally batshit crazy when I left you know, the Bitcoin maximalist team to basically build something to help people buy Dogecoin more easily. Um, but what I saw was, what I saw was that uh, the, these crypto tokens were essentially bringing liquidity into all sorts of things that were, were previously not liquid. And um, that uh, all sorts of value, money being just the first, would start to migrate to these blockchains. And uh, two and a half years later, I think it's pretty clear that that's, that's happening. So um, it's been really fun to see all this play out. And now there's a, a whole event just based on, on tokens themselves. Yeah. So uh, in j this year alone, um, the, the Bitcoin total market value as a percentage of the total digital asset market value has decreased um, from about 80% to, to start the year to below 50% today. Um, has it happened quicker than you expected? And I guess what surprised you most about um, you know, what's played out over the past 12 months? Uh, yeah. So and, and this is in the context of Bitcoin being on a great bull run for the last few months, too. So it's not like Bitcoin's price has fallen. Um, and I, I think this, I think, demonstrates that a lot of these technologies are complementary to each other, that people don't buy um, non-Bitcoin assets and, and just sell, sell Bitcoin. In other words, they don't, one doesn't come at the expense of the other. I think y you'll have a lot of blockchain tokens that all grow together, and the entire crypto market cap will, will gain. Um, but it is, I think, a striking milestone that Bitcoin is less than half of the market cap. Um, tokens are absolutely entering a bubble. No one knows what point along that curve you're in. When that bubble pops, we'll see where the market caps balance out again. But for now, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Got it. So one of the things I like about your approach is I think uh, you take a very kind of uh, pragmatic approach to building products. Um, you know, it, it, the past examples of, of you know, Satoshi Dice and Shapeshift, um, generally, you're kind of focused on serving the crypto community, um, whereas a lot of other entrepreneurs are, are trying to build things to bring this technology to the masses, which I think is also super important, but I think there's, you know, something interesting about your kind of approach to building products. And that leads us to uh, your most recent product that you guys announced this week, um, which is Prism. So why don't you kind of talk about Prism um, and why you're excited about it and why you think it's a really important product for the crypto community? Yeah, should I put the slide up? Yeah. So yeah, uh, we announced this on Monday. Uh, this is Prism. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to talk about it finally. It's a, a portfolio marketplace. Basically, it's built on Ethereum smart contracts and it allows anyone to create a customized portfolio of tokens. Um, of any sort of value and allocation. And you back it with Ether as collateral. Um, Shapeshift backs the other side with Ether as collateral as well into a smart contract. And then um, from there on, the portfolio tracks the value of the underlying assets. And because it's fully collateralized and it's governed by a smart contract, um, sh uh, Shapeshift basically doesn't have any part in the payout or the performance of the, of the fund. So it makes it trustless. So in other words, it's the first time that someone can gain exposure to a basket of cryptocurrencies without having to leave their money at an exchange or without having to download a whole bunch of wallets and deal with a bunch of private keys and blockchain syncing. So hopefully it'll help the industry get a little more decentralized to pull some of the value out of uh, centralized exchanges, which continue to be a really big risk. So I think we've got a lot of uh, crypto people here today, but I think there's also some people maybe not uh, deep into the community. So. On the surface, um, you know, one might say, you know, you could you could create your own digital asset portfolio using Kraken or Poloniex or, or GDAX um, right now. Um, so, 
what, what do you think is really like unique and important about this product? The, the main thing is that it's trustless. Um, I try to build things that do not centralize risk uh, and, and hopefully decentralize risk. So um, the, the first thing is just that this is a lot safer. Uh, the second thing is that it's a lot easier, especially for someone that's just getting new to this stuff. Um, if you have ever dealt with an exchange, you know that the sign-up process and the onboarding is really a pain in the ass. And um, just like Shapeshift allows someone to move from one digital asset to another without friction, uh, people should be able to acquire a portfolio without friction. Like w every, as a general theme and thesis in this industry, every, every service that can reduce friction is one I think that's moving the industry toward, um, toward its true potential. Got it. So, and this is built on Ethereum, right? It is. Uh, just because Ethereum is currently the best smart contract platform, we'll absolutely be bringing it to Bitcoin as soon as Rootstock is ready. Got it. And can you talk just a little bit about um, the kind of infrastructure and the mechanics behind um, the smart contracts? Just briefly, I mean, not to get yeah. too deep into it. But. Yeah. Um, so essentially, it's a synthetic basket. And uh, it's collateralized by both the buyer and by the seller. And Shapeshift is the seller. So Shapeshift is essentially going short on the basket, and the buyer is going long on the basket. Um, so it would be very foolish for Shapeshift to go short on every portfolio that people create, especially as we've seen these huge runs. So Shapeshift hedges um, that risk in a number of different ways. Um, but all that hedging is really irrelevant to the user. Okay. Um, yeah, And then eventually we will open up that other side so people will actually be able to go short any basket of assets. And then uh, going long or short will sort of be treated equally and people can do either one. Okay. And I've been, uh, I love the product, by the way. I've been use, uh, using it as a beta tester for the past month or so. Um, but one of the things I noticed, uh, it was one of my first times actually getting the user experience of an Ethereum smart contract. And um, I noticed that the fees are actually really high because there's a lot of computation kind of going, um, you know, behind that smart contract. Um, and I noticed, you know, this week it got a lot of kind of great reception, but one of the things people were asking about was like the fees. So can you talk a little bit about like, you know, the fees on Ethereum right now and um, yeah. how that might impact the product in the future? Yeah, there's sort of two, three, three fees that are relevant to Prism. Um, one is just sort of the gas cost in Ethereum of setting up smart contracts. So the creation of the portfolio smart contract and the dissolution of it. Um, that round trip costs about uh, 0.05 ETH. And that was actually after quite a bit of optimization. It used to be 0.25 ETH, which when we started building it was not very much money, but uh, <laughs> now it's quite a bit. So um, it's is it, by the way, sorry, is it ETH or F? <laughs> I don't know. I think both both can work. Okay, yeah, I, both I say work. ETH, but that's okay. So that, that's sort of the gas cost of the network. Um, and then we make money on a, essentially a closing fee of 2.4%. So when a prism is closed, um, we take 2.4% of the value, and that's where our revenue comes from. And then there's a monthly fee that pays for the capital costs of what backs these prisms. And we've set that at 1% per month. And a lot of people have said that's really high. And perhaps it is. Um, that number will change as the price of collateral for ETH uh, goes up and down. So essentially, it's, a, it's an interest rate on ETH as an asset. Um, and that we'll see what the market ends up being. But we just set it at 1% per month to start. Got it. And we can actually, we've got some slides to show the product. You could just yeah, kind of through that through them. So uh, maybe we can get here. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe talk about what this is. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is just a screenshot of the main interface. So um, you essentially go to the website. You, uh, this, this is really the first screen. You select the coins that you want to add, and it supports about 50 different assets right now. You can give it a name. You say how much you want to put in, you know, 1 ETH one or, or 10 ETH or whatever. And then you change the allocation in whatever proportion you want. Um, and then you go through a couple steps. Uh, send in your ETH from any any ETH wallet, and then the whole thing is created on the blockchain. And it's really that easy. You you can actually do it directly from the the ABI of Ethereum itself if you're a technical user, and uh, that, that's that's it. And this is an example of a portfolio that I created, and it actually represents um, all of the the tokens um, that speakers uh, today are behind. Um, so if you guys. Uh, you know, really like what you see today from all the entrepreneurs that are um, you know, building these tokens, you can actually, you know, 
go on Prism, create your own basket um, of Token Summit um, you know, speakers. And um, I think it's pretty cool that um, you know, we've seen a lot um, of you know, interesting funds being built and things like this, but this makes it really easy to do it trustlessly. So. Yeah, one, one thing in business and whenever you're building services for people, if you can make something just a little bit easier, you will find a lot of customers. It doesn't have to be a lot easier, it doesn't have to be like revolutionarily easier, but people like easy. And so bring that to them and they will be happy. Got it. So uh, switching gears a bit, uh, we've got about four minutes left from um, you know, th the Prism product to kind of just some more general questions. Um, there's probably a lot of entrepreneurs uh, in this room that are um, either you know, building uh, token-based products or thinking about it. I'm curious how you, th you guys think about, um, for the core Shapeshift product, adding new tokens. Yeah, we, we get this question all the time, you know, especially from people that want us to add their, their token. And we really um, don't have a lot of criteria other than we want to see that it has market traction. So when a coin is released, if we see that a lot of people are <coughs> trading it at the exchanges, we consider adding it. Uh, and it depends on our workload with other projects and it depends on how complex the coin is. If it's on Ethereum, like an ERC-20 token, it's a lot easier than if it's a brand new blockchain. Um, and, and so that's it. Got it, got it. Um, so you tweeted about uh, probably a month ago that you believe that the total market of value of digital assets will increase from uh, 30 billion to 300 billion. And I think about a month ago it was 30 billion. I think now it's closer to 90 billion. Um, but I'm curious uh, what you think uh, will be the major catalyst uh, to get us there. Because I mean, William talked about at the beginning, uh, most of this event is going to be about um, kind of the, the businesses uniquely enabled by tokens and, and the use cases. But I think it, it's pretty evident that the main use case today for uh, tokens broadly is investment and speculation. Um, so in, in, in thinking about 30 billion to, to 300 billion, do you think investment and speculation will just get us there? Or do you think, uh, do you expect to see some use cases that people are, are really using. Yeah, so th this is an important point, this, this concept of speculation. Um, a lot of critics look at this ecosystem and as they looked at Bitcoin prior and they say, everyone buying it is just speculating. And there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, early on, any groundbreaking project is almost entirely speculation. That's the whole point. You're speculating that someday this project might actually do something, change the world. And um, this, this happened with Bitcoin. When I got involved in 2011, it's probably fair to say that 99% of people using Bitcoin back then were just speculating. And today, that, that's fallen, but maybe today it's 50, 60, 80% of all Bitcoin use is still speculation. Uh, but that's much lower than it used to be. So the, the real use cases start coming out over time. But if those use cases are going to exist in the future, it makes a lot of sense to speculate on it today. And so people shouldn't be concerned that all these tokens are having massive speculation. That is, that is uh, the first required step to anything becoming big. Interesting. So you didn't directly answer my question about use cases. I'm sure a lot of people, you know, there's clearly really passionate people in the room that are um, you know, into that, but there's some people that are just like, well, I don't really care about investment speculation. Like, what are, what are the use cases? So do you, I mean, do you think we can get to much higher just on investment speculation, or do you expect um, use cases in the next you know, two to five years, would you say? Well, the, yeah, there's already use cases for this stuff, um, and those, those will grow. And it's always this very complex uh, combination where a lot of people are using it to speculate, a lot of people are using it for a purpose, and a lot of people are doing both. Um, so you can't really s separate the two. They, they come hand in hand. And there's always going to be a lot of speculation, especially on any new asset that just comes out. Um, but you know, if you look at Bitcoin, you can tell that it's not just speculation now when you see the actual transaction numbers and, and how much they're going up. And there are, there are people are around the world that use Bitcoin that have no idea about tokens. They have no idea about like the crypto history of Bitcoin. They have no idea about the block size debate. They just use the technology. And that's becoming a bigger and bigger thing, which is really exciting. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Thank you.